Thank you very much. Is it okay now? Can you hear me? Hello. So, uh, my name is Balaj Vargo, and I'm hacking on LibreOffice since 2018. I'm working at Allotropia since uh, June. Most of my work is related to Cork and uh, Chart, but I also have some work in Writer and Impress as well. And also I worked a lot of on OXML inter interoperability and new features, of course. Uh, I will show you new implementations, features and bug fixes around charts and uh, auto-filter issues in Calc. So let's start them. Um, this feature was the movable chart uh, data point labels. Uh, earlier it wasn't possible to move these objects and uh, shapes. So it was a shape with uh, predefined fixed positions like uh, top, middle, right, uh, left, and etc. But uh, there were some other positions like best fit in case of uh, pie chart. Uh, by the way, it uh, is possible to move uh, these objects in Microsoft Office. The expectation was to make the data labels movable, uh, also in, chart, in the charts. Uh, so let's move, let's see how it looks like. Yeah, uh, so as you can see now, uh, these data labels are moved uh, away from their predefined fixed position. position. Uh, it, is it is possible to move them with mouse uh, or arrow keys as well. Mm, to make it work, I had to add some new objects to the data label shapes objects and also I had to manage the position and size uh, of the shapes, uh, depending on which chart type we have, and uh, a lot of other things as well, like uh, import, export filters. I had to create uh, new objects uh, for leader lines, and I had to manage uh, overlaps, and etc. I will show you examples for that. Um, obviously, moving the data labels is uh, working in case of all chart types, uh, also the import and export. Almost. <laughs> Let's see another not trivial chart type. It's uh, on this slide. You can see how it uh, looked like in case of pie chart before any uh, implementation. It is a uh, simple for the outside position, and it uh, wasn't possible to move the labels yet. There were also many overlaps and uh, unreadable labels. Mm, the picture was taken after an ODS export. Uh, also, the pie chart has uh, different kind of labels positions, as I mentioned earlier. So it was uh, it was harder to handle the movements from these positions, uh, but I will talk about it later. Let's see how it looks like uh, now. Mm, this pie chart uh, had the labels with an outside positions and. Uh, mm, from the labels were moved from that position uh, to that exact position where they are now on the picture. And uh, the image was made after an ODS export, so also the ODS import and exports uh, are working well. Also, there are no overlaps there, which is partly due to a new algorithm that we use uh, on the labels as well. Uh, you can see leader lines there, uh, but uh, let's talk about those later. And let's see another example for the OXML part. Uh, in this slide, there is a picture about how it looked like after an OXML import before any implementation. In this case, the chart label is moved uh, outside from the chart area on the top and the left side as well. By the way, the data labels above should be inside the red rectangle and also on the left side as well, in the red rectangle, and would be connected to leader lines. Mm, but it didn't work yet. Let's see how it looks like after a correct import and the implementation. Uh, it's a picture how it looked like after the OXML import fix and the data labels movement implementation. 
these labels were moved to those exact positions in Excel, where uh, they are on the picture. Uh, now they are in the same position in Calc as well. Um, by the way, it is also possible to move these uh, labels anywhere inside the chart. Um, the calculation is uh, based on a simple coordinate geometry theorem. Um, we calculate the move position from a fixed zero position, which is the top left uh, side of the chart and the previous position of the data label. Also, as I mentioned, the hardest part was making it work in case of pie chart because there is a position named uh, best fit, which is a very different algorithm than the other ones. So let's see what's happening there. Uh, two things are important here. As I mentioned, uh, we calculate the position from the zero position and the left, uh, top left corner of the chart position. The second thing is that the best fit uh, position, position, which is also didn't work well. You can see on the, on the left side, there are overlaps uh, and the leader lines make no sense, uh, which was a harshly developed uh, implementation from earlier. Uh, on the right side, you can see the results, uh, how it looks like now after rewriting some part of the best fit algorithm, uh, how it works. Uh, first, we check that the uh, data label is fit um, inside the pie slice. If yes, we keep uh, it in. If not, uh, we move it outside while we watching the other labels. Um, the pie chart position and the uh, side of the chart. Also, we are uh, avoiding to not being any overlap with the other labels. Mm, let's see another uh, example. On the left side there is another example how it looks uh, like after an OX summary import. You can see uh, little, uh, little leader lines as well. And the picture on the right side was made after improving the best fit algorithm, the leader lines, the data label movements and the filters as well. I think it looks better now and the data labels that overlapping each other uh, in case of pie chart as well. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the leader lines, which was also another improvement, but mm, these lines are uh, connected to the data labels with, uh, with the correct data points. It is also a new object and it can be turned on and uh, off these lines are only visible if the distance uh, between the data labels and points are large enough. Other hands, uh, we don't create uh, them and don't rendering them. Mm, it's not a very interesting slide, but it uh, shows some related bugs which had been fixed by improving this area. It uh, was a lot different kind of develop, started from similar developments to rewriting uh, more complex algorithms. But uh, let's move on to another implementation. On this uh, slide, there was a custom shapes inside the chart uh, objects. It is possible to draw different kind of shapes into the charts, like on the top of the slide. But the problem was that uh, we didn't import and export them to XML. Uh, the image was created before the implementation, of course, and there should be uh, shapes inside the charts, each other inside the chart. Let's see how it looks like now. Mm, after the fix and implementation, all kind of uh, shapes can be imported and exported inside the chart as well, mm, all kind of file format. There was also uh, issues around the ODS import and export, but that also works now. Let's see another feature. Uh, it's a really interesting one. This feature is that uh, now we can use uh, named uh, ranges for data ranges in charts. On the picture, you can see that it wasn't possible to give any named ranges or data ranges. And the text box of the range was red. Uh, also, the chart uh, wasn't appeared. 
By the way, it, uh, it is possible in Microsoft Plex, and because of that, after no XML import, the charts are disappeared and transformed, some, sometimes transformed into images, but sometimes disappeared. Let's see how it looks like now. As you can see, it is possible now to use uh, named ranges and database ranges in charts. Also, the ODF and the OXML filters are working, so there won't be any data losses. Of course, uh, you can only use uh, valid uh, named ranges or uh, database ranges, otherwise the text box of the data range will be read just like before. Also, you, as I mentioned, you can use database ranges as well. Uh, let's move on to another area. Uh, that's the auto filter area. It is a very popular and widespread around uh, the users. The first part of these improvements was uh, date filtering. The most problem was related uh, to the OXML import and export. For example, there was missing uh, date time filters and the results of the filtering in other columns was uh, also missing, as you can see on the picture. It shouldn't be empty, of course. Uh, also, after the export, all the filter disappeared. So let's see. On the left side, you can see that after um, OXML import, the data range and the auto filter arrows are completely disappeared. So the hidden rows cannot make visible again, only if you create a new filter on that range or just make the hidden rows visible again. Uh, on the right side, you can see the results uh, after the filters fix. Uh, the filtering works well in the correct, and the correct values are checked and unchecked in case of all date and time filters. They are imported and exported correctly to XML as well. Let's see uh, another feature. It is the formatted values in the filter list. As you can see before any implementation, not the formatted filter elements, but, uh, but the unformatted ones appeared in the auto filter list. So it was less user friendly and it was uh, pretty slow with a large amount uh, of data. For example, if you had a column with formatted currency or rounded values, the default unformatted uh, numbers appeared in the filter lists. Also, some number values have been compared uh, as a string to each other in the auto filter, and because of that, uh, it was uh, much slower than if we would compare them as a number and filter in by that. Mm, so let's see how it looks like now. Mm. As you can see, there are uh, the formatted filter values in the C column and also in the auto filter list uh, as well. In this case, it is uh, just an example for a currency format, but it should work with uh, all kind of cell format. But uh, even if uh, they are formatted values, the auto filter engine comparing them as a formatted uh, numbers and not as a string, of course, which uh, makes it uh, faster, especially with, uh, with a lot of data. The hardest part was here to handle uh, the duplicated values, which are came from the rounded values, because if we uh, rounded the values, it's very possible that we uh, get, some, uh, get some same <coughs> values, but that's also uh, we are also handling those as well. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is also a new feature in the auto filter area. Uh, with this, uh, you can see the hidden elements in and their status in the filter list. Uh, what are hidden by other uh, filters of different columns for. Uh, for someone it can be useful, especially if wants to see which elements were checked uh, or unchecked before they are disappeared by another filters. Especially in case of large filters and lots of columns, it can be very useful. 
Also, it uh, cannot be changed, which is um, the checkboxes, which is very important. Uh, otherwise, the functionality of the auto filter uh, would have uh, changed. So you cannot check or uncheck the elements. And the inactive elements are at the end of the list. So it won't bother uh, using the auto filter. Um, by the way, in the future, maybe uh, this feature will be able to turn, turn on uh, or off, but that's not implemented yet. Um, it's also a uh, slide, some related bugs. Uh, which had been uh, fixed by improving the auto filter area. It was a lot uh, different kind of developed, uh, develops. Uh, also, I could present uh, a lot of other things like uh, the issue when the counting, counting the, the number of auto filter records doesn't work in the status bar, and there was uh, wrong results uh, on the button of the, on the sidebar. That's also working as well. Mm, let's see some future plans. Uh, at Allotropy, I'm also working on running LibreOffice in WebAssembly. Now we have uh, good results as well. And the uh, Calc can be run in a, in a browser, but still have a lot of other issue there, which waiting for more work, but it's running. We will talk about it with Torsten for a later talk uh, and other uh, features in the WebAssembly. But let's talk about it later. And time for questions. Is there anyone? Sorry if I was too fast, but <laughs> I like talking fast. So I hope everyone, everything was clear. So if, no, if there's no question, thank you very much. Oh. Have you already any idea what you will be doing next uh, in Calc? Uh, I don't. Uh, no, at the moment, but probably it's working. Oh. Yeah, so probably I will continue my work around uh, the auto filter and uh, chart issues. There are still remaining some uh, also at the chart issues. For example, the, the best fit algorithm, it's not working perfectly in case of uh, exporting to Mm, the OXML because, mm, as I mentioned, uh, the Excel and the uh, Calc use different algorithms to count in the best position uh, of the data labels, and because of that, we cannot export it them to the same position, of course. And the most the hardest part uh, that moving the data labels from the best fit positions because. The original position is different from in the key in the two application because of that we cannot know we cannot import um, we can import uh, perfectly but we cannot export perfectly to the same position so it will never be the same in the two application but at least um, it works the OXML import perfectly at the moment so your question probably keep working on the chart and the auto filter variant many other side uh, uh, of the cog, of course. <coughs> Thank you. Any other question? If no, thank you very much.